In this video, we're going to be talking about catenaries, and I talked about catenaries a little bit before when I was talking about the applications of Cosh X, but this video is totally dedicated to the technical aspects of the catenary, such as equations and derivatives and things like that. So I thought we'd start with a small uh, history thing, because it's actually interesting how so many prominent scientists all contributed to the um, catenary and the equations about it and stuff like that. So it all starts with Galileo, and Galileo, in all of his intelligence, still thought that the form that you get from holding a string between two fixed points uh, was a parabola. So he, till the day he died, thought it was a parabola. Um, but what happened was the German mathematician Jungus proved him wrong, and he said that this is not a parabola, this is something totally different. This is, uh, well, this is a catenary. But he basically proved that it was not, not a parabola. And then what we had was a man called Jacob Bernoulli, um, who was best known for, he actually kind of discovered Euler's number, E, before Euler did. Um, and even though that sounds weird, he didn't coin the term E, but he found he used it in his calculations of finance and stuff like that, so he's kind of attributed with that. Um, he posed a challenge to the mathematical community, saying, okay, we know that this thing is not a parabola, but who can find the equation of it? So three men together, uh, Leibniz, Johann Bernoulli, and Huygens, together found the equation of a catenary, which we'll see in a second, and jo uh, Johann Bernoulli, which was the brother of Jacob Bernoulli, and he was best known for educating Euler in his youth. He was one of Euler's professors, teachers. Um, and then also Huygens, who was best known for discovering rings of Saturn and stuff like that. And Leibniz, of course, we all know. Uh, he was the father, the inventor of, you know, half of calculus along with Newton. They all found the equation of the catenary together in response to his challenge. And then we attribute Robert Hooke, who most people know as the person who coined the term cell, uh, as the small building block of life, you know, the... Uh, the small cells that hold like all the organelles and stuff like that. He was the one who coined that term. He's best known in the world of catenary for applying this catenary to actual life. What he did was in St. Paul's Cathedral, he was the first one to use the catenary as an arch shape, like turned upside down just like this, um, as one of the strongest shapes that you can use to make uh, a building. So all these people just kind of collaborated. It was a big teamwork effort and that's how we get all the properties, all the math, math equations, and the real-world applications of the catenary. So, enough about that. Let's move on to a little bit of math now. So now, a catenary that we looked at before to refresh, the equation is given by y equals a cosh x over a. And a can be any constant, really. So if, it's, if a is 1, then we have the simplest catenary, just cosh x. And cosh x by itself is a catenary. And just to refresh on how that looks on a graph, it is not a parabola, has a different shape. It looks like this. Um, so it's definitely not y equals x squared because it doesn't even touch the origin. Um, so yeah, um, now let's try to find the derivative of it. So we can write out cosh x as what it really is. e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. And that's the definition of cosh x. Now we can find the derivative easily just using some um, e to the x derivatives. So we get this as the derivative, and that happens to equal to sinh x. So whereas the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, the derivative of cosh x is sinh, not negative. And if we take the derivative of sinh x, you can look at this and see it's going to go back to cosh x. So it just cycles cosh sinh, cosh sinh, never a negative in there. And you can see why, because let's look at the graph really fast. So I'll overlay a blue graph, which will be sinh x, and that looks like this, remember, like that. And we see that because on this side of the of the y-axis, we see that this is decreasing a negative slope, which is represented by all the negative here. And on this side, it starts increasing, so we see the positive slope. And then look at the blue graph, which is sinh x. We see that it is always increasing. Um, so basically, we know the derivative is always positive, which explains why in cosh x, it's always above the um, x-axis. So always a positive um, derivative. So now we have the derivatives of them, and that's kind of interesting because they have a little bit of uh, contrast from cosine and sine. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was um, a few properties of the catenary that makes it pretty cool. So let's draw a catenary, just any one, doesn't matter. Okay, so not very even actually, but I'll leave it. Um, actually, I do want it to be even. I think I'll get a new paper. So, let's 
make a little bit better drawing this time. Yeah, all right, so here's our catenary. Um, and one of the coolest properties of the catenary is that if you take any point A to B on the catenary, any point whatsoever, they could be on the left side, wherever you want, and you take the length, the length of the arc right here between them, we'll call that L, and you take the area underneath the catenary, we'll call that A, and you take A over L, you're going to get A. And do you guys remember what A is? A is that original uh, constant that we put into the catenary. And this is true no matter which points you pick. I could have picked a point all the way over here, and a point you know all the way over here, and I could have taken the giant area in between, and the really long arc length in between. And when I divide them in this ratio, I'm going to get A. And that's one of the coolest things about the catenary. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, revolutions. Um, there's actually a thing in math called a roulette. So it means when you when you take a roulette, you're basically taking one shape. So this is one of the easiest ones to think about. We'll take a circle um, as our fixed curve. And we'll take another circle as our moving curve. And whenever you take a roulette, you need three things. You need a fixed curve, uh, a moving curve, and you need a point. So our point will be any point on the circle. And I'll just choose right here, for example. So now I'm going to take this circle right here, this one right here, and I'm going to pretend to spin it around that fixed circle over here. Um, and I'm going to find the path that's traced out by this point as that happens. And it's difficult to like conceptualize, but you're going to see that the path ends up looking like this. And I'll draw it in a different color so you can make out exactly what it looks like. I'll draw it over here so it's apart from all that other stuff. This is a cardioid for those of you who don't know. Um, so this, this is the path that's traced out by when you take a certain point on a circle and spin it around a different circle. And you could actually try this at home if you have some pencils you can spin around. I tried it, but it was a little bit difficult. So um, the reason I'm saying this is because a different uh, roulette is when you take a line as your fixed curve, a parabola as your moving curve, and the focus, okay, the focus of that parabola, which is over here somewhere. Remember, focus directrix. Um, and... You spin this parabola around this curve, and notice that this parabola is infinite in both directions, so it's never going to like turn upside down, it's just going to keep getting bigger. So this focus, let's say the next parabola, that might look a little bit like this, and the focus ends up being up here, which is a little bit higher, uh, and then the parabola just goes up and up, so we'll draw, pretend the parabola is all the way like over here now, you know, now the focus is over here. So the point, the path that it's tracing out, I'll draw it in purple, looks like this. Now, of course, we can trace it the other direction, too, so it just makes a mirror image. And it turns out, this is a really cool thing, that the purple path that's being traced out is a catenary. So even though the parabola and the catenary are not the same curve, they do have this amazing relationship with each other. That when you uh, take the roulette of a parabola over a fixed line, and this can be any line, you take the focus, the focus will trace out a catenary perfectly. And I find that pretty amazing. And last thing to wrap up this video is another roulette um, cool fact. And that is that if you have, let's say you want a square um, or a triangle, any regular polygon. The point is it has to be regular, which means all the sides, all the angles have to be the same. So, and let's say you want to find which path you can do so that it'll perfectly go inside each bump. And what I mean by this is this. Let's take circles, semicircles. So here's a semicircle, and I'll just keep putting them together like this. Now if I were to take this triangle, and I'll begin it right here, and I'll just put its point right here. Um, would that work if I were to, you know, spin this triangle perfectly, keeping a tangent to this curve at all times? Would it end up like this again here perfectly? Would it end up like this again here perfectly? Like this again here? The answer is no for semicircles. That would not work for semicircles. So what if we choose something else like uh, ellipses like this? Or maybe ellipses in the long way like this? The answer is still no, no, and no. The only curve for which this will work for every single uh, regular polygon is, you guessed it, a catenary. So only when we take catenaries, and now you're going to have to assume these are all catenaries, um, and they're just the same catenary over and over again. Now, no matter which fixed, um, you know, you, you pick a fixed polygon, and you put it here. I'll just choose the square, and I'll put it like this. And you always choose one of its um, corners sticking right there. Then as you revolve this square 
around this graph, keeping it tangent at all times, over here it will end up like this. Over here it will end up like this. And of course you have to choose the right catenary and the right uh, polygon. And there's an equation for that, which I've chosen to omit because it's not crucial. Um, it'll end up like this. And a lot of times mathematicians call these roads, like which road will um, allow this to happen. And the answer choice is the road is the catenary. So that's some of the cool things about catenaries, more technical aspects. Um, of course, if you want um, if you want to see how they apply to the real world and just a more general overview, you can look at some other videos. But um, hopefully this helped you understand why the catenary is such an awesome shape overall.